，同学们好。老师好。老师好。老师好。All right, welcome everybody. Great to see you. It is、uh, the second of November, class one of our、uh, study of the third section. Uh, young family Tai Chi Chuan and、uh, Judith is with us. Hello. So、um, let me, before we start, I just want to say a couple of words briefly、um, about what this class is going to be about. So this class will be about three months to get through the third section.、Uh, the third section,、uh, and I think all of you have have studied the third section before. Is anybody new to the third section? Okay, nobody online is new.、Um, so as you know,、um, even though it's the longest section、uh, at about ten minutes when you perform it, seventy、um, to eighty percent of it you've already done. So most of it is repeats, with a couple of flashy movements scattered in between.、Uh, so that's why it only it'll take three, maybe four months to go through that.、Um, the、uh, way. I'm going to do it. Is I do warm-ups before class starts between 10 to and 5 to the hour. I will start with doing warm-ups.、Um, they're completely optional, of course.、Uh, and if anybody wants to join doing the warm-ups that hasn't done them before, we'll do them slowly and I'll gradually introduce them. I just find and I, that it's good to warm up your body before you practice. And if you don't do these warm-ups, I recommend you do whatever warm-ups、uh, you're comfortable with.、Um, My goals for the class twofold, really. One is for us to study、uh, or learn for people who are new the new movements in the third section. But、uh, so that's obviously, you know, this is a third section class. Hey, Tessie, great to see you.、Um, but the other thing, which is a continuation from what we were doing in our practice of the second section. We're going to continue starting with still practice, which really is posture and breathing. And my hope is by the end of this third section class, we'll all be able to start feeling that posture, not only when we're doing standing practice, when we're doing moving practice as well. And we'll actually start our bodies just naturally doing shoulders down, elbows down, head lifting, all those good things. So let us begin with our still practice. Feet shoulder width apart. We'll actually. I'm going to focus on bow stance、uh, for the next few classes、uh, because that's mostly what we're going to do at this part of the third section. But let's just start with a canonical still practice. Feet shoulder width apart, a little bit wider. Feet parallel. Arms in a circle in front of your chest. Knees bent. And let's do our posture checks. We'll take a couple of minutes here. So, one, push your head up. Feel your head is lifting, and then feel everything dropping down from the neck on down. In particular, number two, shoulders dropping, elbows sinking. Then absorb the chest and round the back. Do that by pulling out at the elbows. Make a nice round shape as if it's the surface of a balloon, all the way to your fingertips, and then relax the waist. So that means dropping your hips straight down, and you want to stack over the line between the center of your feet, the center of your pelvis, and the top of your head. And so you're feeling pushing up from the head. Upper body is light, and then from the hips on down, the lower body is sinking, and so sinking into the feet. So you want your weight even on your feet, front and back, a little bit more on the balls than the heels, and then also even left to right. So not more pressure on the outside of your feet than the inside of your feet. And once we've got this. We start feeling our breathing, and so as you breathe in, see if you can notice your belly expanding. As you breathe out, it contracts. So relax from that, and we're going to do bow stance. Let's just quickly review bow stance. So the back foot is to 45 degrees, the front foot is to straight. So corner and straight, 45 degree angle. 
when we're in this forward bow stance, we have 60% on the back foot, 40% on the front foot. Torso is leaning forward so that your torso is roughly in line with your back leg. And you want to have your, we your weight on the feet. So we call that weight over the bubbling well, even between front and back, between ball and heel, particularly your back heel. The other thing about the bow stance, when you're in your bow stance, make sure that you have your crotch rounded, so that particularly your front knee isn't tilted in, and make sure that your hips are centered on this line parallel to your front foot, so that you're not tilted this way or this way. So let us begin and do a bow stance. Hey, Michael, welcome. Okay, so we'll start from here. Shift your weight to one side, open the other toe to 45 degrees. Step straight out as far as your foot will go, uh, shoulder width apart, and go into a bow stance. We'll do just a minute to begin with, since many of us, maybe this is the first time you've done this in a while. So feel in this position, head up, so the front of your face is vertical, even though your torso is tilted. Feel your shoulders sinking, your elbows dropping. Feel your chest rounded. And relax your waist, so drop your hip down. And that's, that's the one that I find is the most interesting. There's the most action when you're in bow stance with that one. And as you're in this position, check your feet, particularly your back heel. Make sure that your back heel isn't lifting. And when we're in this position, then breathe in and out smoothly and evenly. So let's change sides. So shift back, bring the front foot in, put it down 45 degrees, put weight on that foot, step the other foot out. So it's going to be shoulder width and as far forward as you can comfortably bring it back and go into your bow stance. Torso leaning forward in line with the back leg and let's do the standing so head up feel the crown of your head pushing up everything else is sinking down from the neck on down in particular sink the shoulders drop the elbows absorb the chest and round the back so feel your elbows pulling out Feel the fingertips tingling as you have this whole circle of your arms enlivened. And now relax your waist. So make sure that you don't have your butt sticking out. Make sure that you have an open and extended and stretched feeling in your lower back, in your lumbar spine. And feel the weight on your feet, 60% in the front, 40 in the back. Let's change and do it again on the other side. As you practice this on your own, you can gradually make it longer and longer, as long as it's comfortable for you. When you start worrying more about being uncomfortable, then it's time to stop. When you can't pay attention to relaxing the waist, dropping the waist, dropping the hips down, absorb the chest round the back, Shoulders down, elbows down, and head up. And if your arms start hurting, that's fine. You can always just bring them down, rest, and bring them up again. Usually it's the arms that are the first to go. And that's fine. And that's a minute, so let's change to the other side. and step out to the bow stance on the other side. Feel your hips centralized between the feet, that, those parallel red lines, 60% on the front, 40 on the back. Make sure that you have the weight of your body flat on both feet, particularly the back one. Back leg is straight but not locked. Relax the waist. Absorb the chest, 
Drop the shoulders and elbows and head up. And in the last 15 seconds, just see if you can detect your abdomen expanding as you breathe in and contracting as you breathe out. And we'll finish. So we'll drop the arms, bring the back foot forward parallel to the front and stop. And I find just a few minutes of this, uh, well, actually, yeah, I suppose, you know, my, my hidden subtext that is no longer hidden is that I hope by the end of us doing the third section together, um, you'll also be a fan of standing practice. It's, it's like, it's like uh, sauerkraut and smelly cheese. It takes some getting used to, but once, once you like it, you like it. Okay, so we're going to start doing the um, third section today. Uh, the third section begins in the same way as the second section does. So at the end of the first section, we got to cross hands. At the end of the second section, we get to cross hands. We're going to go into embrace tiger, return to the mountain, roll back, press, and push. And then from there on, we'll do, we'll do the new movements. Although the first new movement in the third section is actually a repeat. It's just single whip. But let us actually practice from about the middle of the second section through the beginning of the third section. I'll just call the movements. And so we are going to start in um, single whip. So I'm assuming we're the, I'm facing to the front in the same direction as you. So I'm facing the 12 o'clock direction. And we're going to do cloud hands. So we're going to start in single whip. Looking to the left, which is the nine o'clock direction. So we're in single whip. I'll just call the movements. I won't give any cues. Cloud hands. One. Two. Three. Single whip. High pat on horse. Transition to separation kick right. Right separation kick. Transition to left separation kick. Left separation kick. Turn body. Left heel kick. Left brush knee. Right brush knee. Step forward, punch down. Turn body, chop with fist. Step forward, parry block and punch. Right heel kick. Left strike tiger. Right strike tiger. Right heel kick. Twin fists. Boxing opponent's ears. Left heel kick.
turn body, right heel kick. This is the 360. Step forward, parry, block, and punch. Apparent closing up. Cross hands. We're just going to continue into the beginning of the third section, just like the second section starts. Embrace Tiger, return to the mountain. Roll back. Press. Push. And stop. Okay. So that is the second half of the second section and the beginning of the third section. Uh, if there are any questions, any of those movements that anybody would like to review, uh, why don't we do that? Before I check if there are questions, uh, just something I sh wanted to mention now that we've got a few more people. Um, just for those of you who try and interpret what you see on the screen, my camera is about my eye height when I'm in this position. So actually when my arms are out straight, you're looking, the camera is looking down on my arms, even though my arms are, as far as I'm concerned, horizontal. So that's something to bear in mind when you when you like try and figure out what you're seeing on the screen. Remember that the, you can actually see, you know, like this tilt. Uh, the camera is quite is looking down uh, on me. Okay. Are there any questions about any of those movements that we did together? Okay. Not hearing any. Uh, let us then begin with the third section. So the first movement in the third section is diagonal single whip. Uh, it is, in fact, just a standard single whip. Uh, the only thing is you're starting in a slightly different direction and ending in a different direction. So normally, uh, when we do the form together, so let's say I'm, I'm starting in the same direction as you would, um, we do press and push. And then we, we're starting facing uh, to the right side, the three o'clock direction, and we do single whip, and we turn through 300, uh, 180 degrees, and we end up facing the left side, uh, or the nine o'clock direction. We're pretty much going to do the same thing with this single whip. Because if you remember, when we do embrace tiger return to the mountain, we start facing the front and we turn almost to straight and step out almost to the corner. So in so when we're doing press and push after embrace tiger to the, uh, turn to the mountain, we are almost to the back right corner for you. So it would be uh, between uh, three o'clock. It's probably around about four o'clock, five o'clock direction. So from here, we're in push, just as we are at the beginning, you know, when we get, or when we're always going to single whip from grass to tail. So it's just going to be a standard single whip. So sit back, wait, flatten palms, pull, road, pull with the arms. Now your right foot is going to go to the forward, straight forward direction now. And we're going to make a hook. The arm is, instead of being to the corner, is going to be to the side and we're going to step out to the corner. That's why this is called diagonal single whip, because it ends up on the diagonal. But it's a standard single whip. You're in a standard bow stance. So let's just do that together a couple of times, just to make sure. I, I, first, I will do this in the same direction as you. So imagine that we started doing um, embrace tiger return to the mountain, right? So we go to the corner behind you. So you're probably facing away from the screen. And we're in push. 
So diagonal single whip, Sh start shifting back weight, flatten the palms, pulling with the left hand. You're going to pivot on the right foot. The right foot is going to go to straight, pointing in the 12 o'clock direction. Keep the arms going to the left. Then they come to the right, press down in front of your belly, and make a hook straight out to the side. As you bring the left foot in and step out again, the left arm goes to 45 degrees. As you push forward to flatten the foot, the left arm rotates and then strikes out. You should be in a bow stance to the corner, so just check your footwork. The right foot is to the straight direction, the left foot is to the corner. If you bring your back foot, your right foot, parallel to the front foot and bring it for forwards, you should have shoulder width between them. How is that? Yes, no, yes, I'm seeing a thumbs up, I'm seeing nods. Yep, everybody's good with that. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna move on and we're going to do Wild Horse Parts Its Main, which is the first new movement uh, in the third section. So let us talk, let me just demonstrate the movement. So uh, you remember we started off Embrace Tiger Return to the Mountain, then we did single whip to the corner. So it's the front left corner between 9 o'clock and 12 o'clock. So this is the direction that you would be facing. I'll turn around shortly so that you can see my arms better. But you're going to shift back your weight, pivot the, on the left heel. The right arm comes under as you bring the right foot in and step out, less than corner and sweep up with the right hand. That's parting wild horse's main one. So the thing that we're gonna do first, as always, uh, is we're gonna do the footwork. So you're starting in your bow stance to the corner. I'm gonna turn around so you can see my feet. The footwork. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, turn, we're gonna shift our weight back and we're gonna pivot the left foot more than 90 degrees. And so if you remember the rule, whether you move your weight slightly or a lot depends on this angle of your front foot. We're gonna open the front foot more than 90 degrees. So shift your weight almost all the way back, keep a bit in your heel, pivot the left heel. Your left heel is gonna end up being between corner and straight. So it's going to be, let's say, 20, 25 inches from the side direction. You're going to shift your weight back, release the hips, and then step out into a bow stance. Your right foot is going to be pointing between straight and corner, and you shift forward. The reason we do this is this is a bow stance. It's a standard bow stance. It's just not pointing in a standard direction. So by standard, I mean the, the one, if you define sort of a straight direction from the front foot, there's a 45 degree opening angle to the back foot. I am shoulder width apart between my feet. The reason why we're gonna practice this footwork a couple of times is because again, you know, we're stepping behind ourselves and we're doing it on a slightly unusual direction. We, it's easy to step too narrow. So let's do that together. So I'll start again in the same direction that you're probably doing it. If you're starting facing to the front, you're doing a diagonal single whip. So your left toe, uh, yeah, let's try, it. let's try it over here. Left toe to the corner, right foot to straight. Sit back your weight, pivot the left heel. The left foot is between corner and straight. Shift back, pick up the right foot, step out. The right foot is going to land between straight and corner. Shift into a bow stance. Do it in this direction. Shift back weight, pivot more than 90 degrees so that the left foot is almost straight but not quite. Sit back, pick up the right foot, step out into a bow. The right foot is going to be pointing more than straight, but less than corner shift into a bow stance. I have a question, JP. 
Would you say that when you step out with the front foot that you are your heel is above if there were a parallel line that it is above the left toe? I'm sorry. So, so say that again. So when I shift back here, what's the question? When you go to step out to a bow, yeah, is the right foot, is the heel of the right foot going to be essentially parallel with the toe of the left foot? Um, That's what it looks like. It, it would depend on the length of your stance. But, it, but don't, okay. I, I, I don't think that that is. That's not. That, I don't think that, I mean, I don't know of any requirements around that. Okay. So, you know, if, because a lot will depend on, you know, how long your bow stance is to begin with here. Right. Right. Now, because the width is always going to be the same, but if you've got a low, if you, if you're here, it'll probably be somewhat different. Okay. So I, I wouldn't worry about that. The thing that, the one thing that one can ask about is when I shift my toe in more than corner, less than straight, I shift back. How do I just step my foot out or do yeah. I bring it in and step it out? Yeah, right? right. The rule there is if your feet are shoulder width or closer, then you can just do a straight step out. And so for me, I find this is about shoulder width. My foot comes in slightly, probably just because my hip releases, but it's not in and out for me here. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So let's do that. Could, could oh, yes, go ahead, Judith. I'm sorry. Could you review one more time going from the footwork, going from diagonal single whip um, to parting the horses, man, yes. I'm, I'm, and do it. If you would kindly do it um, in our direction. Yes. That would be lovely. Okay, so let me just make sure, Judith. So in your direction means I'm starting off in this direction when we that start. The, yeah, that, that would be helpful. Yes. Okay. So the front is in front of me. My right foot is pointing to the front. I've stepped out. I'm in diagonal single whip. So my left leg, my left toe is between the side. It's is essentially pointing towards the corner, which is what? 1030 on the clock. So footwork, shift back your weight, pivot on the left heel. The left foot goes more than straight, sorry, more than corner, less than straight. So it's almost, but not quite, to the right-hand side or the three o'clock direction. Shift back your weight, step out. The right foot is on the other side of, this, of, of the line going to the side, more than straight, less than corner, shift forward. Again, we're in diagonal single whip, going to the corner, sit back weight, pivot on the left heel, more than 90 degrees, left foot, more than corner, less than straight. Sit back weight, release the hips, step out, right toe is going to point more than straight, less than corner, shift into a bow stance. Okay, okay. thank you, thank you. Okay. So, so let me let me give you a trailer. You you've all done the form before, but a trailer of where we're going to just make give give some sense uh, for what this why this footwork is the way it is. So if if I go if I again I'm starting in the same direction that you are, I'm stepping out. My direction is between straight and corner. Now, if I open my right toe ever so slightly, but let's say I don't open it at all, it's still more than straight, less than corner. And I do the same thing on the other side. So now my left foot is between straight and corner. You can see I'm going in this direction towards three o'clock. Now I go to the other side. Now I go to the other side. So I can just keep doing this, and I'm actually moving in a straight line towards 9 o'clock, but my feet are on either side of it as I go. But every time, it's a bow stance. If you, if, if, for, those, for those of us who like arithmetic, if you want to be really precise, and Taiji Chuen isn't precise, 
one way to think about it is with a bow stance, I've got 45 degrees between my feet, right? So if I'm going to split the difference, it's 22 and a half degrees on either side, <laughs> right? So I'm actually going to be here, 22 and a half degrees from straight. And this side is going to be 22 and a half degrees. Then I step to this one. Again, it's open 22 and a half degrees. I just keep going. And, and Pierre, in this case, um, you're not stepping in to step out. You're just stepping out. Is that correct? Yes. For for this for the second one. Is that your question, Steve? For are we talking about the first one or the second and third? The second and third. Yeah. You're not you're not stepping well. Uh, your foot is coming in as it's going by. So let's so we're we're since we're talking about the second and third one, let's just talk about that footwork. So I'm going into the first one here. Now, as my foot comes in, it it comes by my heel and goes out again. Actually, let me do it in this direction. As you can see me like going away into the distance. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll face you. You can see the whole foot. So I'm here. My back foot comes in and goes out. Back foot comes in and goes out. The way Marcy Young explains this, this is actually more than shoulder width this way. So we, we're not going to step like this. That would be very clumsy. So when so if if we're going in this direction now, we're not going to step like this. We're going to step like this. We're not going to step like this. You can feel it's like very clumsy. It's in and out. Um, thanks. Right. Now, oh, any other questions? Let's do the arm movements. Um, okay, so I'm going to, so you've, you're, I assume, facing in this direction, uh, and you're going to turn in on the left heel. I'm going to turn through 180 degrees so you can see my arms. Okay, so we're in this bow stance to the corner. Shift weight back. As I turn my left toe in, my arms go with my body, but the arm position doesn't change. Then I'm going to shift back my weight and step out. When my arms are closed, I root with the right heel. You know this, close and step. Then as I shift my weight forward, the right arm opens and the left comes down. Let's do that again. Starting to the corner. Single whip. Shift back weight, pivot on the left heel, arms turn with the body but don't change. Now, as you shift your, sit your weight back, the right arm drops, the left arm drops a bit as well. Step out, close and step, you're rooting with the right foot. Now, as you shift your weight forward with the body turn, the right arm comes up and the left arm goes down. Again. We're in diagonal, single whip. One, sit back, weight, pivot on the left heel, arms turn with the body but don't change. Two, as you sit back, arms close, step out, heel touch. Three, with the waist turn, sweep the right arm up. A few things to note, a few details about the arm positions. So we're starting with single whip here. This arm, your left arm, is going to come down and close. And you know, when we close the arm, remember the, the arm is always in front of our chest. So the, the, when we close in this position, the arm isn't up here. Remember, it's down here. So your arm is going to come down. The left arm is going to come down that you can close. The right arm, which was in a hook, is going to come into is going to come down close to your body. So it's going to come down close to your body and close. Then 
you're going to open. So the right arm is going to go up and the left arm is going to come down. What I want you to pay attention to is that the circle of the, the right arm circle is going to come down and around. So it's not going to be out here. It's going to come close to the body and out. So down and in, up and out. Down and in, up and out. When we finish, the, the fingertips are about uh, face height, eye height. And your gaze is actually going to be over your fingertips. So this is one of the few places in the form where we're actually looking up and you can tilt your head up a bit to show people that you're actually looking up at the end of the form, at the end of this movement. The left hand, when we finish with the left hand, it'll be by the side of your hip and the tiger's mouth, in other words, you know, this opening between your fingers and your thumb, your tiger's mouth will point at your forearm center. Let's just do those together. And I'll connect these points to the movement. So we're starting in single whip. One, shift weight to the right, pivot on the left heel, left foot more than straight, less than corner. Now, as you sink down, close, step out, heel touch. So the right palm is about chest height. Left palm is down by your hip. Now, with body turning, sweep the right arm up. When you're finishing, fingertips about face height, you're looking over your palms, your right arm and your right thigh are in a line. Your left hand is in front of your left hip. One way to check that it's right is just, just relax your arm, keep your upper arm in the same position and sit your palm. It's not here. It's very easy for us to sort of do this. It's here. Any questions? Go ahead, Steve. Is your, is your right knee over the bubbling oil when you make your movement here? Oh, at the end, you mean? Yes, sir. Yes, Michael. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we always, you know, I suppose whenever, a, whenever a, our feet are on the ground, at least one of them should be, you know, weighed over the bubbling well. Um, so for now, you know, the exception is when we're in empty stance, your front foot will either be ball or heel, so that's not bubbling well. But when you're in a bow stance, certainly, and because we're ending in a bow stance, it's bubbling well front and bubbling well back. Always. Okay. Steve, you had a question? Yeah, I'm just curious. Can you go over there? I know there's like a real subtle wind up. Just before you, yep. Is that okay. that happens like right before yes. you? Well, I'll I'll tell you what I how I understand it. Um, so and this is this is body movement, right? And that's so we've talked about lower body, we've talked about upper body. Now let's talk about middle body. Okay, so again, I will I'm going to face you, so you can see my arms. So with body turning. We're going to shift. Now here, we're going to start. This coming back is a waist turn. So the waist is going to come in and actually to here. Then from here, we are actually going to root with the right foot. We're going to tilt our torso in the direction of the right foot. And this is the release here. So actually there's a waist turn here. The thing to, to check is that when our arms are closed, the chest is almost straight and then it's going to open. And the work is being done by the opening of the chest, not the opening of the arms. Is that the wind up that you had in mind, Steve? It seems like just before you separate your arms, there's a little bit of a twist of a wind-up yes. before it. Yeah. So um, I actually think of it as you know the the figure eight for the waist turn because what you're doing is 
your your chest is coming to the right then it's going to turn to the left and then it's going to come to the right again so you're actually going from side to side with a waist turn so the first the first turn of your waist is to the right then you're going to come back to the left and then you're going to go back to the right and so what we try and do so the principle is practice continuously without interruption we never go boom 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 we actually put a little circle at the edge and that little circle so that everything remains continuous may be what you call the wind up it's also called the figure eight okay Okay, so let's Thanks. so let's practice. <laughs> Say again. Thank you. Yeah, that's the best I can do. That's good enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, let's let's do this movement together a few times. I'm going to start in the same direction as you. Single whip to the corner. Shift back weight. Pivot on the right. Left heel. Arms to the right. Sit back. Close, step out with the waist turn open to the right. Again, both the, uh, diagonal single whip. So, wild horse parts its main. Shift back weight, pivot on the left heel foot between straight and corner. As you sit back your weight, close the arms, chest turns to the left, step out, heel touch. Now, wind up, go to the right. One more. Diagonal single whip. Shift back, pivot on the left heel, arms turn. Now close the arms, left arm chest height, right arm by the hips, open. So it, what I want to do now is show you the application for this movement. And what you will have noticed and what you know is that the ending posture of this is just like um, diagonal flying. It's the same ending posture. But the application is slightly different. Um, and it's worth just at least knowing that. OK, so let's see. Yeah, so let's do um, Parting Wild Horses main. So if Susan comes and punches towards me, uh, that's, yeah. So Susan's going to come in. I'm going to catch her arm here. I'm going to get my arm, forearm, upper arm, under her shoulder. And I'm going to essentially do a ward off. And so the movement actually is this. So it's quite a short movement, and it's mostly body turning. The movement that we that that ends up with the same shape in diagonal flying actually is a much bigger movement. So if Susan's going to so let's let's say I've done um, uh, yeah so I'm here I've done let me just finish my thought <laughs> I've done repulse monkey Susan's going to come in I'm going to connect grab and here it's split energy. So I'm going to strike up with my arm here and pull with the other arm. So if Susan, you step away. So with diagonal flying, it's this movement. It's actually a split energy. So split means one goes one way, the other goes the other way. With the parting wild horse's mane, and let's just do that one more time, it's actually ward off. It's actually much shorter movement and so Steve in a way to your question that wind up is actually bigger in um, diagonal flying because it's a bigger movement here it's more subtle because it's actually a ward off energy okay thank you Susan let's continue with the uh, uh, the second and the third one We've already done the footwork, but we'll do it again. So I'm going to, we're going to just focus on the footwork. So we've started doing diagonal single whip. 
the footwork for parting wild horses main run pivot left heel left foot between straight and corner step out right foot between straight and corner now i'm going to shift my weight back slightly pick up my right foot and open it ever so slightly and put it down again be careful not to open it a lot and actually when we start very often we just pick it up and put it down because if you open it too there's a temptation to open it too far so open the right foot put it down still less than corner and step through you're back in a bow stance, 45 degrees between the front foot and the back foot, shoulder width between your feet. Number three is the same thing, but on the other side. Shift weight back slightly, open the left toe ever so slightly, put it back down, step through. Now the right foot, more than straight, less than corner, back into a bow stance. And we can just keep going indefinitely at this point. We can just do one after the other. Okay, now let's talk about the R movements. So let's start from single whip. And we're going to go into diagonal, uh, so parting wild horse main one. So when I open my right, shift my weight back slightly, open my right foot, I'm going to start doing a grab with my right arm. When I put it down, I'm going to close. You can see that my left arm is this nice rounded shape. And my right arm has gone from palm up to palm down, which is a grab, because I'm going to go into close and step. So here I'm in close and step, left foot between straight and corner, and then shift weight forward, open. Now again, my left arm is in the direction of my left thigh, fingertips, eye height, looking over my finger looking over my fingertips. Number three, shift weight back. Left toe open slightly. Shift your weight back. Close. Connect and step. The thing I want you to pay attention to and see the pattern is when we go from this movement to this movement, it's this. Essentially, the top hand becomes a grab, the bottom hand becomes nice and round. And one place that you've seen it before, when we are in parry block and punch, we go to here. So this is very similar to parry block and punch. Grab with the left, the right arm comes down, close and step. It's the same principle, your same technique, you're just seeing it in a slightly different setting. So let's do, and I'll, now I'll go in your direction. So let's do those three uh, parting wild horses mains, one after the other, and then we'll pause and see if there are any questions. Going in your direction, starting with diagonal single whip. Parting wild horse main one, one shift, weight, pivot on the left heel, more than corner, less than straight. Shifting weight back, close the arms, left palm chest height, right palm by the left hip, step out, heel touch, with a waist turn, open. Looking over the fingertips, check your left, your left hand is in front of your left hip, tiger's mouth to, to right forearm center. Two, shift weight back slightly, open the right toe slightly as the right palm turns over, the left palm turns in, close step out, heel touch, and open. Again, shift weight back slightly, open the left toe, turn the left palm over, a nice round ward off shape with the right arm. As the arms come in, close, step, and open. We'll do it again. Shift weight back slightly, open the right foot, turn the right hand over, make a hollow with your left arm, close the arms in as you root with the left heel, open. Again, shift weight back slightly, open the left foot with arm rotations, close, step and open. Any questions?
Yes, go ahead, Steve. So when you're opening your left foot or your right foot, are you just, are you swiveling it a little bit or are you just opening and closing or is there a little bit of a swivel? Uh, the, the, the standard way of, the, the standard way of doing it is, is there is a slight opening, like just a couple of degrees. So what you're doing is you're shifting your weight back just slightly so that you can release the ball of your foot and you're opening your foot just a tad. And then you're going to step through. And then again, you shift your weight back slightly and open it just a touch. Now, the reason why we say open it slightly is, again, it's so that you can maintain your bow stance. So let's say my left foot is less than corner, and I open it to corner. If I'm going to step into a bow stance, for this to be a bow stance, this foot is going to have to be in the straight direction because my back foot is to the corner. So I don't want to open my back foot more than corner. It has to stay less than corner. And for that reason, it's very, you know, if, if you're struggling to keep, you know, your feet from not like splaying out, just pick it up and put it down just so that you know that there's a weight shift. But don't, you know, you don't actually have to open. For me, the, the, the reason for the open, um, the reason why I like it is the waist leads the limbs. And so when you're, when, when am I, my waist is doing two things, it's opening my foot slightly and it's rotating my arm. So there's actually this going on, but you have to be really careful not to open it too wide, which is why if, you know, if you're finding that you're opening it too wide and you're ending up like with this, you know, if you open it too wide, let's say you're here and you open this foot to the corner and you go, oh, well, this foot's got to be over here. You've got a very wide stance. It's probably going to be like 55, 60 degrees. And then you're going to open this guy. Now you've got 90 degrees between your feet. <laughs> right? So that's what we're trying to avoid. All right, thank you. Let's see. So we've talked about footwork, <clears throat> arm movements, body movements. Let's talk about gaze. So where are we looking as we do this? Um, let's start from the beginning, which is the single whip to the corner, diagonal single whip. So as I come across, my leading arm is my left arm. So I'm looking in the direction of my left arm over my, not at my left hand, but in the direction of my left hand. As I close, when my right hand crosses the direction of my left hand, I pick it up and now my right hand is going to be the leading hand. So here I'm looking in the direction of my right hand, sort of down-ish, not at the horizon, you know, maybe 20 degrees below the horizon. For me, it's sort of over the upper part of my forearm I'm looking down. Then I'm going to open up and from here I'm going to follow my right arm because that's the leading arm. Now, shift back weight, rotate. As I close my left arm, that becomes the leading hand. When I'm closing step, I'm looking in the direction of my left palm, which is over towards the right. Then I follow it up. Open, looking down as I close, looking up as I finish. One last thing, and then we'll practice this together a couple more times. Um, question? So yes, saying, please. Your gaze starts with your leading hand, yep. but then it looks downwards at what's going to become the leading hand. Your, your, your head may move as well, as well as your eyeballs. Yes. This is, this is one of the few places in the form where our head actually tilts down. Uh, the others are a needle at sea bottom punching down, but this is, it, we actually do have the head tilting down a bit because we're looking down here and then we're looking up here. Okay, um, last thing is 
be be aware that when that the work of this movement, you know, you think about your arm, but it's actually the waist. And so when you finish your arm swing, you're not opening your chest very much. Your chest is, your arm is maybe a little bit more than 90 degrees from your chest, but it's not open like this. You actually have to turn your chest and so that, so that your um, arm and your chest are meh, just more than 90 degrees from each other. So to, to illustrate, I wonder if you can see this. You're not like this when you finish. You're like this. You're not like this. You're more like this. So that you don't want to be wide open. Because actually, if you think about it, you don't have a lot of strength like this. You have a lot more strength. If you think about this, chest sinking, absorbing the... Uh, absorbing the chest, opening the back. Let's do this two more times from diagonal single whip. And we'll do all three of the parting wild horses, mate. From diagonal single whip. Parting wild horses, main one. Shift weight to the right, pivot on the left heel. Then second, sink to the left, close the arms. Step out when the arms close, root with the right foot. With the waist turn, open the right hand, look over the fingertips. Number two, shift weight back slightly, open the right toe slightly, rotate the arms, close. Look over your right elbow, heel touch, then open, looking over your left fingertips. Number three, shift back, rotate the arms, close, and open. And again, from diagonal single whip, shift back weight, turn more than corner, less than straight, sit back, close the arms, step out, more than straight but less than corner, sweep up, look over the fingertips. Number two, shift weight back slightly. Lift and put down the right foot. Rotate the, uh, the right arm, left arm to close. Looking over the right elbow. Shift forward. Looking up. You're in a bow stance. Number three, shift weight slightly. With the foot opening slightly, start rotating the left hand. Close the arms. Look down slightly. Shift the weight with the waist turning. Arm sweeps. Finish. Hold that position for a moment. Let's just check that our ending posture is good. So right arm should be in line with the right thigh. Fingertips about eye height, forehead height. You're looking over your fingertips. Your left, your left palm is in front of your left hip. Your tiger's mouth is pointing at the right forearm center. You're in a bow stance, torso tilted forward in the direction of your right leg. And stop. Dr. Chairman, Tai Tian. No, sure, Tai Tian.